Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. My very first laser was an endurance laser and back then it was by far the best consumer option out there. There were some other laser engravers but uh, they all were pretty much unanimously crap. But by now Jeep laser engravers have gotten really good. So how did endurance keep up? That's why we're gonna take a look at their new 8.5 watt laser head and see if it can uh, keep up with the competition from China. Before we get started with the video, full disclosure, Endurance did send over this uh, laser free of charge and I am also writing articles for them which are paid. However, they have no influence on what I'm reviewing in this video and have not seen this video before it went live. I'll try to do my very best to give my objective opinion about uh, this product, but I just uh, want you guys to know the full story behind it. Before I got this laser, the laser I was using from them was the 10 watt plus and while it had amazing power, uh, it was definitely the most powerful uh, laser out there, significantly more powerful than all the Chinese ones, it had a major flaw and it was super, super heavy. Uh, to keep all that power contained, they had to use uh, Peltier coolers and a big old heatsink or even two big old heatsinks, which made this super heavy. What that meant is that while it's great for cutting stuff, uh, if you want to go back and forth engraving or do any sort of fast movements, it does not work because it's just too ma much mass to accelerate. This is why I was very excited to uh, check out this new module, which is a lot smaller. It basically uh, compares one to one uh, to the likes of uh, Ortur or uh, any of the other uh, Chinese brands. They're also using a very similar uh, Aluminum heatsink uh, that has the laser diode sandwiched in the middle is clamped together and using a fan from the top. Now, I was stupid and used the wrong voltage in the beginning, uh, so I blew out the fan, but that's just because I didn't use the included power supply but my own. Uh, so I'm using a slightly different fan that comes than that comes with the uh, machine. Uh, but to keep the laser cool with such a small uh, heatsink, this fan does need to blow quite a lot of air and will not be quiet. Uh, the standard fan is like uh, almost like a server uh, kind of fan uh, that is on there, so it's definitely not going to be worth the quiet. Uh, but on the plus side, uh, this allows them uh, to keep this unit very small and that means it can easily be mounted on uh, even like cantilever style uh, laser engravers, 3D printers and many more. You can also see that there is an air assist nozzle on here. Uh, it's uh, quite well designed. Uh, the air comes in from the side. You will have to provide your own air pump or a small air compressor. Uh, but then just kind of uh, comes out uh, the front uh, where the cutting is. Now, in my opinion, it is a bit short. Uh, this laser focuses uh, ideally at around 50 to 60 uh, millimeters. And at that point, uh, the air assist nozzle is around 20 to 30 millimeters away from the workpiece. So ideally you'd want to have it a bit uh, closer so that you can uh, get the most effect of that air and it doesn't uh, spray outside of the cut. But you could very easily uh, just put a different nozzle on there if that is something that bothers you. There's also a uh, not fixed focus uh, lens. You can rotate the lens element, but they include some extra rings uh, so that uh, once you've kind of found a uh, focused length that you want, you can uh, use those rings to lock it in place and then, I don't know, use some uh, object uh, to kind of just height adjust it. Uh, when I mounted it uh, to uh, like the true Laser Master or uh, our favorite laser, I focused it to the same distance uh, as the included lasers, so I could just use the little metal cylinder to set the focus height uh, after having uh, it focused manually once. However, if you, uh, you are using a motion platform that does not allow you to move the laser up and down, you can of course also manually focus it by hand. But the lens is quite wobbly in there, so you will still probably want to put one of those uh, extra nuts on there and uh, jam it each time so that uh, it does not rattle loose from uh, the fan vibrations. Then to control it, uh, there's this laser box and it is attached uh, with this cable. Now this cable is nicely braided, but it is fixed. Like, there is no connector at the laser box and also not at the laser itself. So however long this cable is, is 
what is stuck with. Now it's decently long, for most machines it will be fine, but uh, if I wanted to mount this uh, laser on, for example, my CNC, I would have to either manually cut open these cables and make them longer or mount the control box somewhere on the gantry because it would not be long enough to go through the directions all the way to the electronics cabinet. Also, if you want to nicely manage it and fit it through a hole somewhere, that's going to be quite difficult. So I really wish they uh, put uh, ideally a connector on both ends or at least on one end so you can uh, fit it through stuff or and may more easily make extensions if you need it. Also, the connectors uh, you see on the ends here uh, for the PWM or analog input, uh, also I put those on there. Those uh, were just bare wires uh, with the sleeving uh, kind of straying and uh, not looking uh, very neat. Uh, but since I did a lot of testing and I uh, wanted to connect a bunch of different stuff, I uh, went ahead and put uh, some JST uh, connectors on there just to have it more easily uh, interchangeable and for it to look a bit neater. Now speaking of PWM, you, most of the time you're going to use the black one. That is what is compatible with uh, all the of the laser engravers. It just takes a 12 to 24 volt PDWM signal as the input and will then uh, translate that to laser power. This works great and in many cases you will just have to uh, connect ground and the PWM pin to whatever you were using before and it's going to work straight out of the box. If you're using a different system with just 5 volt PWM you can use uh, the blue one or this also supports a 0 to 10 volt analog. But uh, if you can use PWM, I definitely recommend that. As with analog, you don't have as fine control. And it's, uh, my, uh, when I tried it with the CNC, uh, at 0 volt, it did not actually quite turn all the way off, uh, which might be fine, but it's definitely not ideal. That's just because PWM is a lot uh, of a better uh, thing in that regard. As if it's, when it's all the way off, it's just 0 volts and it's clear that it's off. And when you have, for example, just 5% uh, power, it's not a very small voltage, but it's just a very short duration of the full, uh, voltage, which is much easier to transmit uh, clearly. To power it, it's just using a single uh, barrel jack on the bottom. Thank God they actually used a connector there. Uh, it would have been really terrible if they uh, connected that straight into a power supply. But it's just uh, 12 volts, uh, 5 amps. Uh, fairly standard. Uh, just make sure that you don't use the power uh, supply from uh, one of your lasers which is running on 24 volts uh, because while the laser diode is protected has the circuit in there the fan is hooked up straight and will blow out as I've learned the hard way. And that is all you get in the box. How you end up mounting uh, this to your machine is up to you. Now it includes uh, mounting holes in the back uh, of different kinds uh, with various spacings but for me they were not compatible straight out with anything. Uh, for everything uh, that I used I had to make some sort of adapter plate. Now it's not a big deal, you don't need anything super complicated. Uh, for the laser engravers uh, you can just use the laser itself with the old laser head on there and use some tinted acrylic, cut out a little adapter uh, plate that is going to uh, adjust uh, the spacing and uh, it's very quick to uh, cut out, doesn't cost much and it's easy to assemble. But considering that uh, out of the three uh, laser engravers I tested, uh, out of the four laser engravers I tested, the three of them had the same spacing, it would have been great to, for example, see that. If your laser engraver also has height adjustment like the laser master or uh, the Alfero laser here, uh, I actually uh, ended up e using the bracket from the stock laser, just unscrewed it and then made an adapter for that so I could use the stock height adjustment and that just made my life a whole lot easier. But of course you cannot just mount this on a laser engraver, uh, you can also mount it on a 3D printer for example. And there. Uh, I found it easiest to just uh, drill some holes in the shroud and screw it in directly. But if you want to be uh, less permanent, they also have various uh, 3D models on the website you can download that you can uh, try and use. And while they look very uh, universal and there might be a way to kind of sort of fix it on there, uh, it's not quite as practical uh, as it looks. And I just snapped mine. For putting it on the CNC, uh, I just made this little uh, ring which uh, clamps around uh, the spindle and uh, attaches the laser. That works uh, quite well and it's easy to uh, take on and off. 
But still, uh, no matter what you mount it to, you will have to make your own adapter plate. Then for the electronics, uh, if you're using a laser engraver, uh, then you can just use the standard PWM uh, signal from there. But you will have to just make a small adapter cable. Now, if you don't have crimping tools or a soldering iron, you can just kind of jam some jumper wires into there and use some hot glue to fix it. It's going to work. It's not going to be ideal, but it should uh, get the job done. But of course, uh, if you have just a small amount of uh, like crimping tools or something, you can easily just uh, create a small uh, cable that directly attaches to everything and makes it look nice and neat. For mounting uh, on a 3D printer, what you're typically going to use is uh, the part cooling fan. As that one in most 3D printers is also PWM uh, controlled, uh, so you can vary that speed and it has a very easy command to use. On the CNC, it depends a lot on your controller board. Uh, I fought a lot with mine and did not have too much luck, uh, but generally uh, if you have a somewhat not completely horrible controller board, you should be able to use one of the output pins as a uh, just PWM uh, pin and uh, control the laser with that. It's a good idea to, uh, in your Mach 3 or Mach 4 or whatever you're using, just clone your configuration and make a separate configuration for the laser. That way you can uh, disable the spindle and uh, tune some small parameters and uh, hook up the laser that way and then uh, add that to your CNC. Software-wise, for the most part, I'm using Lightburn. Uh, if you're just using the laser uh, engravers, uh, you can use whatever software you want, laser gable, Lightburn or any of the other uh, ones as uh, you don't have to change anything in the software, it'll uh, just work straight since uh, it was already configured for a laser. You just might have to uh, adjust your power settings a bit since uh, most likely you're going to have more power now. If you're using a 3D printer, uh, you can use a Lightburn as well. It does have a, a Marlin configuration and you can connect to it. Though your mileage is going to vary slightly on how well uh, it is going to work. On the Sidewinder, it worked uh, great and uh, basically just plugged it in and uh, had uh, no issues whatsoever. You can notice that uh, the 3D printer board is not uh, designed quite as well for laser engraving and uh, for things like image engraving, there is some stuttering in there as it is just not able to turn that pin on and off uh, quick enough uh, for it to keep the smooth movement. But for things like uh, cutting uh, or engraving lines, uh, uh, it worked perfectly fine. However, on, uh, for example, uh, the Alpha VCU30 behind me, it is quite an old printer uh, with an old motherboard and it was cheap when I got it back then. Uh, the control for the fan, while it, it is technically PWM, it is only operating at 8 Hz, uh, which is super slow. You want at least a few hundred Hz for it uh, to uh, create uh, nicely varied power instead of just blinking. So with the Alpha Visa, uh, I was only able to uh, get the laser to blink basically eight times a second uh, while the PWM was turning on and off. So that was not really working. So I'd have to get a new controller board for that. Now it wouldn't be that expensive uh, to replace the controller board, but at that point, uh, you really want to ask yourself, do you really want such a small laser or you rather want to buy a larger frame uh, for something like a uh, laser master and just uh, buy either with completely without a laser or with a super cheap laser and then replace the laser and have a much more capable frame. On the good old Bluer Plus behind me, uh, while well, it worked great, I was able to turn the laser on and off, PWM worked great. Uh, somehow the firmware just does some really wonky stuff and uh, the timing of turning the laser on and off while running G-code was just completely off. Uh, like it, it would turn the laser on right away uh, and then start moving, uh, although it was only after the first move that it should have turned it on. And then uh, there are some, it turns it off uh, and on uh, for short breaks when uh, it is doing a travel move, except the travel move is only half a second later. So it's just somehow completely misaligned. So to get that working, you would have to reflash a different firmware on to the either just more properly configured version of Marlin, or uh, more ideally, uh, you can actually, same with the artillery sidewinder, you could uh, flash a global uh, firmware on there, which would give you a much better control for the laser, and it should probably also get rid of the stuttering issue, but that means that you are permanently converting it to a laser and you cannot use it as a 3D printer anymore. But now let's get on to the power and the engraving results as a whole. This is the area where uh, 
Back when I first got an Endurance Laser, I was completely just blown away uh, as it had so much more uh, power and such a nicer laser spot than any of the other lasers. But machines uh, like the Alfero here uh, are proof that in the last two, three, four years, uh, the Chinese companies have really stepped up the game in a big way. Not only uh, have they been able to basically match Endurance's power output, they have also really compress that laser spot down a lot. Now the endurance laser here, the 8.5 uh, watt version, uh, is still on par or maybe 5 to 10% uh, better than uh, the best, the most powerful one of my uh, laser diodes, uh, that being the LU2-4 long focus uh, version or even short focus uh, version of, on the uh, Alfero here, which is somewhat equivalent to the uh, Laser Master 2 Pro from uh, Ortur, but it is only marginally um, more powerful, so definitely not worth an upgrade from there. But if you have something uh, more on the lower end, like a Neji Master for example, uh, upgrading to uh, this uh, is gonna give you a whole new world of power. If you want to know what you can cut with that, you can check out uh, my various other uh, reviews, for example, for the Laser Master 2 Pro or for the uh, Alfero laser, uh, as it's basically the same. The settings might be 5 or 10% uh, different, but uh, the capabilities are about the same. Like, wood all the way up to like 8 millimeters is not going to be any uh, problem. Uh, tainted acrylic uh, works great, stuff, stuff like leather works amazing as well, and also things like anodized aluminum you can engrave on. But with laser engravers, uh, the power is just one part of the story. The other uh, part is how nice is the laser spot. And to do that, I actually went through all of my lasers and did some well, as scientific testing as possible. I engraved the same uh, design, which is just the outline of my logo, onto these uh, black painted uh, metal cards. And then I used uh, the macro lens on my phone, which is actually basically a microscope uh, to take very close pictures. You should see them uh, now. And this kind of allows me to compare how wide the spot is. On some of them, you can very clearly see that in one direction, it, the line is very thin, whereas in the other direction, it is quite wide. That used to be the problem with all lasers and basically meant that if you were cutting you were through a long time ago already in one direction, while you still need more and more passes to uh, cut through into the other direction. Endurance lasers have been uh, somewhat uh, better than the cheap Chinese ones, but on the Alfero laser here, uh, I was completely blown away in that regard, as the, you have managed to really compress that spot size. I would say now that the Endurance laser is roughly on par, maybe a tad worse uh, than uh, the two higher end uh, modules for the Alfero laser, but definitely uh, beats out uh, the standard uh, Laser Master 2 Pro and then also beats out the Atom Stack or the Neji Master and all of those. But you can uh, be your own judge uh, on uh, these images here of uh, what you prefer. So at the end of the day, this seems like a fairly decent laser. It had some shortcomings and some like inconveniences, but the big elephant in the room that we have to talk about is the price. This laser head, depending on what kind of a sale they have going on, uh, is gonna cost you over 500 uh, to more like 800 dollars, uh, which is way more than Laser Master 2 Pro with the frame and everything going on. You can even add on an enclosure for the same price. So is it worth the extra cost? It's literally two to three times as expensive as the Chinese options. Now, what they claim is a lot better durability and longevity. It is very hard for me to test that, uh, as I have not had my lasers long enough and I have a lot of different lasers, so I don't use one all the time. Uh, but apparently uh, their laser has a lot la longer lifespan and they are using higher quality components. If that is something that matters to you a lot, then this might be a good option, but uh, if you don't use a laser all that often, or if you're of the mindset that, well, if it burns out in two years, I'll just get a newer, shinier one anyhow, uh, and probably half the same price or even ch cheaper still, then that might not be as big of an argument. So at the end of the day, you're gonna have to make that decision uh, for you uh, if the increased price is worth it. But one thing is for sure, uh, the competition for endurance is 
gotten a lot tougher uh, now compared to five years ago when I first checked them out. With that said, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments and I will gladly get back to you. Also, if you want to see more videos like this one, leave a like down below, make sure to subscribe and I'm going to see you guys next time.